Listen, I'm going to skip right past Michael Scott. I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. And get to the point here. The Broncos cannot afford to have three straight poor head coaching hires. Fans Joseph, Big Fangio, and whoever number three is going to be. So if you want the Broncos to make a good hire, then like this video because we need all the good mojo we can get right now. Happy Friday, happy weekend, whenever you are watching this. This is Matthew Peterson on the Broncos Breakdown, breaking down the latest Broncos rumors out there. We'll touch on some mock drafts, see who someone has the Broncos taken at the number nine spots, a quarterback, hint, hint, Sam Howell. And then we'll look at the latest on the head coaching search and wrap it up by talking about Marcus Mariota. We'll figure out why he's in today's show. But let's start by talking about Sam Howell because... The Broncos rumored slash maybe slash hopefully not are going to be looking at him at the number nine spot. Well, they're going to be looking at everyone. When you have a top 10 pick, you do your homework. And they should do their homework on Sam Howell. The quarterback out of UNC was taken in the latest pro football focus NFL mock draft on the Broncos behalf at the number nine spot. If the Broncos still have their number nine pick, that means one thing to me. That means they did not trade for Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson or a big-name quarterback, most likely, because they would have had to cough that number nine overall pick to get that guy. So I bet if they were still picking at nine, then they're picking a quarterback. I hope it's not Sam Howell. I mean, no offense to you, Sam, if you're watching today's video. I bet you're a nice guy. I bet you're cool, have some beers with, you know, a good order at cookout. But I would not invest the number nine overall pick in you because I think it's kind of Drew Locke all over again and a lot of traits and similarities. Sam Howell was magnificent, magnificent his sophomore year back in 2020. Junior year, this past season, not so much. Look at the numbers. Just stack them up next to each other, and he regressed across the board. Five points less in his completion percentage, threw for 5,000 yes yards, 5,000 less yards, um, average touchdowns, interceptions across the board. It was downhill for Sam Howell. And so the reason a lot of point, people point to that was, well, Sam Howell lost a lot of weapons. Javante Williams, his running back, is in Denver. Reunite the two. Yeah, I don't think so. This isn't college. You don't just put the band back together and think it's going to work. Sometimes it does, like Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, but those were two top five picks right there. Not the same situation. And the other thing is, Sam Howell lost a lot of weapons. That's why he took a step back. Dude, you don't, draft a you don't draft a quarterback top 10 and then say, well, he lost a lot of weapons, so that's why he regressed. The whole point of drafting someone top 10 is because they don't need a ton around them to elevate the team. That That's not what you draft a top 10 quarterback for. Uh, those are different types of quarterbacks. Those are day three draft quarterbacks where they need a lot around them to be right. The whole point of a top quarterback being taken is they bring everyone else around them up not the other way around. You, you can tell where I'm going on this, but I want to know where you're going. Should the Broncos draft Sam Howell? Give me a D for draft or a P for pass. This is the pinned comment, so if a YouTube hits you with an ad break right now, put your votes in down below. It's the first comment right beneath the video. At number nine, no way, Jose. This is where I do my dad jokes because he's not worth a top ten pick. Maybe if he entered the draft last year after that great season, maybe last year was a loaded quarterback class, I could be talked into picking Sam Howell in the second round. Just kind of like Drew Locke, I think a second round pick, while it's still very valuable, it's worth putting it on a quarterback because if you get it right, you'll feel like a genius when you go, we got this quarterback in the second round. I think a second round pick, maybe I could get talked into. If the Broncos don't make a trade for a quarterback, then that number nine pick should slash have to slash will be used on a QB, just not on Sam Howell. All right, now the latest on the head coaching search for the Broncos. GM George Payne just wrapped up his last interview not long ago uh, with Eric Bieniemy, the Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator. So that's 10 interviews in the books as of Friday. I'm guessing tomorrow, Saturday, if you're watching this then, maybe Sunday, he's going to put out requests for second interviews, probably whittle it down to five. It's a job application. We've all been through this process. But the rumor out there is, should the Broncos and Broncos fans and country be pumping the brakes on Dan Quinn a little bit? Well, we'll get to that in just a moment because there's an interesting story that went out uh, not long ago from an ESPN, Den uh, Den ESPN reporter in Denver. But first, guys, I need to ask you a favor. 
We are in a close race with our New York Giants channel here at Chat Sports. And me and the Giants host go back and forth on what's the better job, the Broncos head coaching job or the Giants head coaching job. And the fact that I have to actually argue with this makes me lose brain cells. So help me beat the Giants now, host, in subscribers. Hit that big red button there. Catching up, but let's pull away. Let's gain some separation. If you think the Broncos head coaching job is better than the Giants head coaching job, hit that big red button and subscribe. Like I was saying, though, Jeff Legwold, Jeff Legwold the ESPN Denver uh, beat reporter, said this. Peyton has known him, and that's Dan Quinn he's talking about, the longest of any of the candidates. When George Payton got the job, most anyone I knew in the league said, if he ever has to hire a coach, keep an eye on Dan Quinn. This is not a new item. This has followed George along since he took the Broncos' job. My feeling on it, the 10,000-foot view is, uh, is to me, if you're the Broncos and I don't have a dog in the hunt, they can hire whoever they want. If you're the Broncos, to me, Dan Quinn is the toughest one to explain to the people who follow the team. It's almost Vic Fangio light. Are you getting a better defensive coach than Vic Fangio? A lot of people in the league would say no. Yeah, he's not Vic Fangio light. I think he's Vic Fangio heavy. I, I think Vic Fangio is a better defensive mind than Dan Quinn probably. But Dan Quinn is a better head coach. You, you can stack up their head coach resumes. They were both head coaches for three plus years. And Dan Quinn had a better run at it. He took his team to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl in his second season. And I get it. He had Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. But as a head coach, you don't just fall into the Super Bowl. That just doesn't happen. Other sports like the NBA, maybe you are a bad coach, but a loaded roster dragged you there. Talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers. But that does not happen in the NBA, in the NFL. So he's not Vic Fangio light. This is a Bud heavy. This is a Vic Fangio heavy. And I think Dan Quinn, maybe some people are going sour on him because he's a defensive-minded guy, and that's who the last two head coaches were. But let's look at the pros and cons of Dan Quinn. Kind of stack them up one up against each other. The pros for Quinn... He's got head coaching experience. Like I said, he took the Falcons to the Super Bowl in his second season. In fact, he took them to the postseason for a couple years. And he turned the Cowboys' defense around instantly. So you're not dropping off in the defensive category. The cons, though, is after the Super Bowl, the 28-3 blown loss, he was never able to really gain control of that team again. And it led to a kind of, a, I wouldn't say ugly departure, but... A one we saw coming for a mile away. He's also a defensive-minded guy. And the last defensive guy in Denver was kind of run out of town because it got stale and repetitive on the offensive side. And then the biggest knock against Dan Quinn when people say he took the Falcons to the Super Bowl, they say, well, it was Kyle Shanahan's offense that took him there. This is the NFL. These are big boys, okay? You don't just walk into a Super Bowl because you got some young hotshot O.C., Okay, it happens together. All right, I, I'm just not going to buy into this madness of the the Falcons got there purely because of Kyle Shanahan. No, I, I will not accept that. I'm just gonna be in denial. With that being said, though, do you want the Broncos to hire Dan Quinn? I, for one, could get around it. I get it. It may not be the most exciting hire because it feels a very reminiscent of the last hire, but that doesn't mean it's the wrong hire. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. We'll get to our third story in just a moment, but I want to tell you about our sportsbook partner, BetUS. If you haven't signed up with them, get in on the action right now. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code BRONCOS125. Just because the Broncos are in the playoffs doesn't mean you can't put some, uh, some cheddar, some money down on the divisional round this weekend. Look at the odds here. I've mentioned it before on some previous Broncos breakdowns this week. I like the Niners plus six. And I'll give you a different one because I've been saying Niners plus six and Bills plus two all week. Let's gas the over in the Bucks versus Rams. Let's have some fun there. Let's get some points on the board. So I'll go the over there. Those are my three picks right there. Let me know what yours are in the comment section below. And make your picks at BetUS. Our third and final story today, Marcus Mariota. No, that's what all my Titans friends used to say in college. Mariota. PFF picked Marcus Mariota to be an ideal candidate for the Broncos to sign in free agency. Mariota's played with the Raiders for the last two seasons after being the second overall pick by the Titans in 2015, and that just didn't work out for both sides. Mariota couldn't stay healthy, and when he was on the field, he had one good year, but the rest was uh, just surrounded by inconsistency. Side Marcus Mariota, as a starter, no. As a backup, 
sure, why not? If Drew Locke doesn't, you know, if the new regime comes in and they trade for a quarterback or they say, hey, Drew, we just want to go a different direction and we don't want your kind of ghost hanging around town and, I don't know, pushing the next guy and keeping the fan base stuck in the previous regime's mindset, well, let's go a different direction. And they want to bring Mariota on to be the backup quarterback, fine by me. Mariota's not done much. Uh, look at the last two years here, his stats with Vegas. He's hardly throw the football. He's come in for some nice red zone packages, and he's been a great target, a great runner. But this season, he's thrown just two passes. So maybe you don't want a quarterback that hasn't thrown the football more than twice in the game the last season. But I think he could be a fun red zone package, and it could open up the offense a little bit as long as Mariota gets over his biggest issue, which is staying healthy, right? Avail availability is the greatest ability. Should the Broncos sign Marcus Mariota, though? I mean, S for sign or an L for leave alone. Wrap up the video by getting your votes in down below. And have a good weekend. We'll catch you guys later here on the Broncos Breakdown.